Look, for whatever reason, the Texans fan base is just full of negative people this offseason. And I think it's completely unjustified. This Texans team has a very, very bright future. And don't get it wrong, this isn't me trying to get everyone to be happy and positive all the time about the Texans, because believe me, I hate the overly positive Texans fans just as much as I hate the overly negative Texans fans. I just believe that the Texans are in a win-win situation right now. Let me explain that, look. Either the Texans, with Bill O'Brien, they either go out there and they perform well, they reach the AFC Championship game, they go to new heights, which is what we all want, right? We want the Texans to reach new heights. We want them to get better, to be one of those elite teams. And next season with Bill O'Brien, it's either going to happen or it's not. Literally, those are the two only options. I think the Texans next year are 100% a playoff team. I think they have the talent to do so. Will they reach new heights? I don't know. That is yet to be seen. But if they don't reach new heights, like if the Texans lose in a wild card weekend, if they lose in the divisional round, Bill O'Brien is getting fired. And I think that is a fact. So either the Texans reach new heights or they don't. If they do, we're all happy because the Texans did something they've never done before. And if they don't, if the Texans don't reach new heights, Bill Bryan ends up getting fired. And that's what pretty much a lot of the fan base wants. I'd say about 85% of the fan base is completely done with Bill O'Brien and they're overly negative. They criticize every single move, but this team has a bright future. Like I said, why? Because if Bill O'Brien gets fired, the Texans coaching job is 100% the hottest job on the market, meaning the best coach out there that we could possibly get will be coming to Houston, whether you think that's Jim Harbaugh, whether you think that's Eric Bieniemy, or Mike Wasowski, I don't know, whoever you think is the best head coach candidate available out there to be the head coach for the Houston Texans, whoever you think it is, that guy is most likely going to be interested in the Texans head coaching job. Why? Just look at the team. This team is young. They have talent pretty much everywhere. Literally. I mean, let's start off with Deshaun. We know who Deshaun is. I mean, what coach out there wouldn't want to coach Deshaun Watson? They're coming into a situation where there's already a quarterback in place. You know, Deshaun Watson is for sure going to be our starting quarterback, he's our franchise quarterback, he's already in place, so the head coach already knows, well, you know, I don't got to worry about finding a franchise quarterback, for example, say, I don't know, the head coach for the Bills gets fired, and then Bill O'Brien gets fired, what job is going to be more attractive, the one with Deshaun Watson, which you pretty much at this point can already know that you got your franchise quarterback, or the one with Josh Allen, who is pretty much a bust. Obviously, the Texans' job is the most attractive one. And then, your wide receiver group. You got DeAndre Hopkins, the best wide receiver in the NFL. You got a legitimate deep threat in Wolf Fuller. Even though he can't stay healthy, but still, you still have him there. You have a very good young slot receiver in Kiki QT. You got Jordan Thomas and Kahali wearing two very young tight ends that both of them have a bunch of potential. So you pretty much already have your weapons in place. You don't really got to touch anything. And then the O-line. Yes, the O-line is troublesome, 
but you got two young, talented, raw offensive tackles to work with in Titus Howard and Max Sharping. Whether you like the Titus Howard pick or not, one thing you have to admit, Titus Howard, if developed properly, he can be a very, very good, even great offensive tackle. So if, you know, a head coach sees that, a head coach candidate sees that, hey, look, Titus Howard, I can work with that, you know? Like, that's going to make the job more attractive because he got pieces in place on the O-line. You got Zach Fulton, who is a good guard. You got Martinez Rankin, who's also young. Nick Martin can hold down at center position. You just got to worry about the two young offensive tackles and bringing them up, developing them. And then defensively, of course, you got Watt. You got Clowney. You got DJ Reader on that D-line. Of course, yes, you do got to re-sign Clowney. Got to extend DJ Reader. But doesn't change the fact that you already have guys in place on that D-line that can pretty much play anywhere. Well, besides DJ Reader, DJ Reader is better suited for inside. But Clowney, Watt, you can do whatever you want with them. There's... They're flexible to any scheme. Clowney's played 3-4. He's played 4-3. JJ can play all over the D-line. He could be an edge rusher. He can be an interior defensive lineman. You can literally do anything with those three. Then you got linebackers, McKinney and Cunningham. Their scheme flexible too. Like, they're not locked into a certain scheme. So if you come in as a new head coach... You really don't have to change the defense up. You know how, like, in certain situations, when the new head coach comes in, they change the whole defense up, and then they have to end up cutting some old players from the old regime? They're not going to have to do that with the Texans, because the Texans, at the moment, they run multiple defenses, different fronts, 4-3 and 4-3. So the guys that play on this defense, on the defensive front, they're flexible. So, they're not going to have to do anything to this defense. And when you talk about the DBs, yeah, you know, it's questionable. Like, you need better corners. But you got Justin Reed. Justin Reed is going to be a top five safety next year. I can pretty much guarantee that. Justin Reed is very talented. You got Lonnie Johnson and Xavier Crawford, two young corners to work with, especially Lonnie Johnson, whose potential is really, really high. So you got a young guy that you can work with and mold him into whatever you want him to be. You want to run a zone scheme? You know what? Lonnie Johnson already does that. You want to run a man scheme? You can develop Lonnie Johnson to that. It might take some time, but guess what? Romeo Cornell might have did you a favor because he probably already developed Lonnie Johnson as a man corner the previous year, which would be this year. And then you have a bunch of cap space to work with. I don't know the exact number, but I believe like at the moment, the Texans are projected to have 80 mil in cap. Of course, you got to factor in Clowney contract, DJ Reader extension, and like Nick Martin extension, depending how Nick Martin does. You'll probably end up with somewhere around, I don't know, put it at 40. But then you consider that you also have another 40 currently sitting here right now that you can roll over to next year then you're looking at 80 mil in cap if a hey, if the new head coach that comes in here wants to spend that money like however he wants he wants to bring in high priced free agents he can do that you know he's got all the cap space in the world he he can do anything so he would definitely be more attracted to it because he could bring whatever players he wants in free agency and then of course we have all of our draft picks and some more as well due to the Tyron Matthew comp pick and I believe we're going to be getting one for Kendall Lamb as well maybe even one for Christian Covington yeah they're probably both going to be seventh round picks but that gives you room to make trades and of course the Tyron Matthew comp pick it's going to be a third round pick so he's got a bunch of picks He's going to have a bunch of cap space. He has a great nucleus to build on. Like, literally, the Texans right now, the way they are right now, is very similar to the Denver Broncos from a few years ago. 
John Fox built this crazy good team. Crazy good. They were never able to get over the hump. Never. Like, they made the Super Bowl, yeah, they made it once, but they got completely smacked around and embarrassed. The Broncos weren't able to win the Super Bowl with John Fox, so he got fired. And then they hired Gary Kubiak and Wade Phillips, and what happens? They come in, and they win the Super Bowl with the team that John Fox built. The way I see the Texans right now is the same way that the Broncos were back then. They have the pieces intact. Can Bill O'Brien get it done? Maybe he can. If he doesn't, then someone else is going to come in here and win the Super Bowl with Bill O'Brien's roster. It's really that simple. I don't understand why Texans fans are being overly negative. This team has a bright future regardless of Bill O'Brien because Bill O'Brien could possibly be gone after this year. And if he's gone, well, guess what? Like I said earlier, head coaches from all over the place are going to be lining up to take this Houston job just because everything's right there for them. They don't have to work for nothing. They don't have to build nothing. It's all pretty much going to be there for them. So, yeah, stop being negative. This Texans team has a very bright future regardless of Bill O'Brien or not. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys for today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.